Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> well, what a absolutely wild week we've had. And it is not a surprise that we are at minus 51 and that we have turned to risk off in all time frames as we predicted last week. Um, absolutely incredible how uh, quickly the market has turned and how deeply it has gone down. While that might not be the, uh, the most incredible uh, part of the story, we do have uh, a, a counter trend model buy that uh, came about on Friday, uh, right at the lows uh, around uh, 269 and we got a huge bounce. Now this model sells after three days, whatever happens. Um, it very strongly suggests in the data that you get a three days worth of rally. Now, uh, whether it'll sell at the top, who knows, but it certainly gave us a strong bounce. Risk is uh, very, very difficult to hold and levels are going to be very important. So let us uh, immediately go through uh, levels that are going to be very, very significant over the course of the next week. And uh, what, what I also want to do here is show you the positions that I have that are working, why they're working and why I think they will continue or not to work. Now, with all the volatility we've been having, it is not surprising that you have to widen the levels at which you are prepared to fight the market. Um, it, uh, you know, this is XLK and it's probably the one that's being least affected by things, but even that goes into the white outside of the green zone. When you see that, it's an overwhelming uh, risk reward to be long of it. If we have a look at SPY here, you can see how far outside it went. Um, I didn't expect this uh, at all, you know, let's be honest. But whenever it does go out, uh, the, the, the risk reward becomes overwhelming and has to be played by you. At some stage, this will calm down. I'm not suggesting it's going to be immediately. But whenever it's outside even of the green zones uh, and you get a counter trend uh, buy signal, uh, basically the risk reward is in your favor. The Blue Angels are just all over the place sim simply because we have no idea what the E in PE is going to be. How far down are these going to adjust over the course of the next three months? I would have thought quite substantially. So what the market is trying to discount or, or work out is where these Blue Angels are going to be in three months time and then possibly try to be on top of the times 15 then. They could easily come down 20%. Um, that, that, is, uh, that is for sure. Uh, earnings could be 20 to 30 percent lower than people were anticipating at this point. If that is the case, then we have uh, this 24, 23, 2400 level as being the times 15. So basically, what uh, you know, what you have to think about is going back even to these levels around the 2100, 2200, that would not be uh, impossible. The market cannot possibly be efficient unless it knows what the E in PE is. And at the moment, everyone is just guessing. I could go through all the charts in the bonds and uh, pretend that I know something that I don't. But that is not going to help you. Levels in this market in individual uh, issues like the twos, the fives, the tens and the thirties are just not going to be uh, helpful. What is helpful is the shape of the yield curve. Now, for weeks I've been saying that this kind of level around 13 basis points in twos tens represents overwhelming uh, risk reward to the upside and it closed the week at 46. To me, as long as the curve keeps on going positive, the, uh, the dangers to the market keep on lessening. Uh, and I, I will explain to you, to me, the yield curve is so important in terms of predicting what is going to happen. 
uh, not immediately, but in the uh, in in the near future. Let's say the medium term, a market which has a steepening yield curve at this point is a market which is calming down. A market which is saying, okay, things are really, really bad now, uh, but the Fed is fighting it and the Fed will get it right. Now, if this uh, curve was going to uh, go back down towards zero, that would be a market which is saying the Fed has lost control. We don't know uh, what is going to happen to interest rates. They might even go negative. Uh, we just haven't got a clue. As long as the curve steepens, it is logical that we are slowing down. We are somewhere, uh, the, the bond market is saying, we are going towards a bottom. It's not going to call a bottom, but it's going to give you the thinking of the bond market. To me, these levels are very important. If we now go back below 20, uh, below 30 basis points, it'll be a huge sign of uncertainty again in the market. And that probably means that S&Ps get hit. Uh, if we go below 13, I think it's all panic stations. It's complete panic stations. But as long as we now bounce off this 35 level and start going up, up towards the 60s and the 70s, where we haven't been for many, many years. Uh, I think that is a, a sign of a market which is getting happier and happier. And the other thing that I look at like a hawk is the differential between the US and Germany in terms of 10-year yields. Uh, let's face it, the uh, US could be hit with coronavirus just as strongly as Europe has been. But on the other hand, we know that the potential to deal with the disease is much greater in the US than it is in Europe. Europe is in a much weaker position and has been economically for a decade, one could argue. Now, if the market says, fine, the, um, the situation is serious, but we will deal with it in the States, then it is natural that this spread stabilizes and goes back towards these kind of levels. You're talking about the 170 to 175 level, something like that. If the market now slowly, slowly stabilizes around the 170 to 175 level, and let's put some kind of a um, some kind of an alert in there, uh, then I think the worst is over. Um, that is what I would like to see as a signal that things are calming down and the risk markets can become efficient again. Until that happens, we are all over the shop. I mean, look at these swings. Nobody knows what is going on. Nobody knows what, why it's going on. And basically, these uh, spreads are being driven by liquidation. They're not being driven by anything else but liquidation. If we start seeing a few days around the 175, 178 level, that will indicate to me that the market is calming down a lot and volatility can come down with it. It looks to me uh, like the dollar and gold have become a total crapshoot. And in so far, um, that, by that I mean we just don't know what position is going to be liquidated next. So we had a whole load of US dollar positions in risk being liquidated and the money taken back home. And then we had a whole load of people deciding that the US dollar was the only safe currency they could possibly hold and straight back up. Now, are we going to have a straight back down again? Why not? I mean, who the hell knows? This is a daily chart. This is a, uh, a weekly chart. They're crazy, right? I mean, absolutely crazy. But it does seem to me like people prefer to hold whenever there's a, a, a significant dip in US dollars, they prefer to hold US dollars. Now, last week I told you, and I will continue to tell you, that to me the US is the safest country for risk. If you're going to hold risk anywhere, you're going to hold it in the US. 
So it does make sense that when the dollar is extremely oversold and outside the Bollinger Bands, people come in and nibble and take it back up. Now, these levels have not changed, okay? Um, let's go back to the daily. Uh, I, I don't see that these levels have changed in the slightest. Uh, 97 uh, 50 and 96.50 especially our swing levels uh, prices will accelerate away from there in either direction maybe the best play and that I'll leave that up to you is whenever the price gets to 96.50 is actually to buy volatility because you will you will get quite a big move the market is um, technically respecting all the levels it's just going through it to um, to exacerbate it because of the volatility. So n next week, I would not be surprised at all to see this 99.80 level uh, touched. Uh, wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. And then possibly some intervention even uh, from, uh, from certain central banks that drive it back down. Impossible to trade this with any conviction in the medium term, simply because all the spread differentials are moving so fast and, and swinging so widely that you are looking at half an hour in front. You're certainly not, not looking at 30 days in front and that I'm very bad at. Gold is actually the one that surprised me the least last week. Um, I've been saying for weeks that gold is not a hedge for what is happening. Um, I don't see the point of, um, of owning gold unless you own it at really, really good levels. What is a good level? 1457 is a good level. It will most probably bounce probably 30, 40, 50 dollars from that level. And the other good level is 1265 and it might bounce a hell of a lot. Gold is a function of the level of the dollar. The, le the dollar is high and a a factor of, of interest rates, bonds, long-term bonds, and there the yields are low, but there you have a steepening yield curve. Uh, all things which are going against gold. I really don't see the point of owning gold. It's something that people liquidate when they need, uh, when they need cash. Um, unless you think that this is going to be a 20, 30 year depression and you know, you're know you going to start needing gold coins to buy eggs. Um, you know, I just don't see the point of owning it at stupid levels. 1457 for a little bit of a nibble. Yeah, sure. Um, 12, 1265 for another bit of a nibble. Great. Uh, but to own it because the end of the world is coming just ridiculous. Having said that, we are at the 200 day moving average, which is sloping up strongly. Would it be surprised if surprised to see a, a, a rally back up to 1550, 1551? Absolutely not. But I do suggest that after a bit of a um, bear flag, it breaks and certainly tests this uh, 1457 level that I've been uh, talking about that will probably be a better buy than uh, uh, you know than, than right here um, much more margin for safety and the 200 day will be still going up i only say that because i know some of you like playing gold and like buying it to me the 14 1450s is still the level to uh, uh, that it's much better to own gold than even uh, up here um, and do I expect it to really break these levels very easily? No, not really, because they're, you know, unless you think the dollar is going to scream another four or five percent, there really is no reason not to buy gold at 1456. Before we go into the individual charts of the risk uh, markets, i.e. the equity markets, I have one to run you through a few spread charts just to show you where we are in the greater scheme of things. Okay, this is a chart of the SPY over the TLT, a ratio chart going back all the way to 2003. And you see that we are now at the same level at the, as 2007. And we are well below the levels where the Fed just panicked in, uh, back in uh, late 2018. Um, and we are in deep doo-doo. Um, 
look, the moving averages are still way, way above. But what this is telling me, funnily enough, is that if you have big rallies in the S&P, which actually take this back up towards two, um, and it would be a big, big rally, it would be like 10%, right? Um, you are still not a buyer of risk. So why? Because all it's done is repaired some damage, but it ha actually hasn't turned the trend. The trend, funnily enough, has been, uh, has been bad ever since sometime in mid-2019 when bonds started outperforming equities. The market is forward-looking and the market somehow knew. Did it know that it was going to be a virus? No, it didn't, but it knew there was something coming. And this is, this to me just says, you know, 10% rally, it's not, you're not out of the woods, okay? You're not out of the woods. This is what this chart tells me. Next important chart I want to show you, and people who've been with me for a long time will remember it. This is basically the yield curve, the, sh the you know, how many points is positive or negative between uh, overnight money and five-year money, and what, uh, and the price of XLF. Now, finally, it has closed the, this huge jaw that it had for, um, you know, months and months and months. It always closes the jaw. So, what does closing the jaw tell me? It tells me that the underperformance of XLF is unlikely to continue unless we see a dip back into negative territory of this yield curve. This is actually telling me that we are uh, planting the seeds for XLF outperformance in the future. The market, the yield curve is going to help XLF over the course of the next several quarters and that may be being short of XLF unless all the banks go bust because of these, you know, because of credit. I doubt is going to be a, a very intelligent strategy going forward. Um, it's unlikely. I think the federal government is going to bend over backwards to help the banks uh, with liquidity, with, with anything you like. And I think it's also going to bend over backward to help small and medium enterprises to prevent them from firing people and from for, prevent them from going bust through liquidity problems. And that's why you might be doing something, um, you know, counter cyclical and counterintuitive, but buying the best of the big banks here is a very, very, very good idea because A, they're very cheap uh, and you, have, you can have a look at the multiples that they're trading at on, um, you know, on, on the, um, Yardani site, this is a counterintuitive uh, trade, but one I think that makes a lot of sense for the next 12 months. Now I want to also show you a couple of trades which have been making uh, monster money, and that is basically INX over IWM. So uh, short Russell, long S&Ps, just working like a dream. Now, this one should be coming very close to, uh, to being a very mature trade, i.e. out of. I got out most of it here on Friday. Um, and why did this work? Well, if things are going to go bust, they're going to go bust in the uh, small to medium enterprise sector, and that's going to feed feel most of the pain, it's going to feel most of the pain of the refinancing or the inability to refinance. So it made very much A, technical, but B, uh, macro and fundamental sense to be long of that spread. And in the course of five days, it gave you, you know, over 10%, um, which is absolutely wonderful. Now, what I'm looking for is for this to slowly come back. Uh, to maybe this kind of level. Now, that would also be a sign that financials have stopped up performing. Russell is very heavy on you know, with financials. Um, and uh, local financials, smaller financials. Um, and this kind of level, and I'm going to put an alert in it, uh, because I definitely want to have an alert at this kind of level, 
Um, it's um, I definitely, definitely, definitely want to rebuy it on a retest of this kind of neckline uh, because I think it's telling you that it goes again afterwards. So a period maybe uh, calm and then the storm again, which would fit in, you know, which would fit in with, with what SPY TLT is telling you. Uh, there are going to be um, some, this is not uh, a short term phenomenon. Uh, I wrongly thought it would be over all in, you know, a few weeks, but it, the, the spreads and the market is telling you that this could could linger for quite some time. The other position that's been making me money hand over fist is uh, along the United States short of Europe. Um, now this is uh, actually FEZ but you know it's the same in stocks, it's the same in DAX, whatever you look at it's the same. Now this has been basically rallying ever since you know God was a boy. Um, but it also makes fundamental sense because Europe is in so, uh, in, in a, it, it's been hit so hard and I think it's in a, its ability to recover is also very low simply because A, rates are already negative, B, all they can really hope to do is fiscal expansion, uh, C, they're so, um, you know, disjointed in their government uh, and they have to wait for the Germans to do everything. But having said that, it's probably a very dangerous levels, isn't it? Um, what If you are bullish of risk, you have to see this stabilize. You have to see this stabilize. Um, and I am bullish of risk longer term, absolutely. I mean, don't get me this wrong. I just think it's going to A, last a very, very long time. And B, uh, there will be uh, worse days than, than Friday uh, in some not so distant future. Um, so let's, um, let's keep on watching what this does. You should set it up for yourselves. And every time you see that this is stabilizing, stabilizing, you know that risk is coming back. Uh, the risk appetite is coming back into the market. Looking at the shorter time frames is complete waste of time I think in um, in the SPX. Now I have shown you um, several spread relationships and if you remember the SPY to TLT I told you that even a 10% rally isn't really saying that this market is out of the woods. Okay so what is the situation? The situation is that we 100% stopped everybody who, you know, with excess positions out and then we did one of the most stupid rallies in, in the last 10 minutes of the day as Trump was doing his press conference and we managed to close above the very important 26.25 and even the 26.75 level. Do I think that is hugely significant? Well, yes and no. Um, yes, insofar as the market shows how quickly and how far it can squeeze the shorts but also no because uh, you know it's just one print we still had an absolutely awful week i mean you know we closed the week up here last week uh, 2970 and we closed it at 2700 uh you know is that good is 200 points down after a squeeze really good i am not so sure you know um um you know it, sorry nearly 300 points nearly 10% i mean is that so good <laughs> not really but on the other hand it's getting some definition isn't it you will you can see where the market can possibly shoot for these kind of uh, 161 percent levels at uh, 2265 and 138 at uh, 2391 those are the kind of levels that he can shoot for. And don't forget with 50, 60, 70% volatility, I mean, we could easily see that. We could see that overnight. Um, but what it's also telling me is that we're gonna have very, very sharp squeezes upwards uh, and that buying in those white areas of deviations is not the wrong thing to do. The, uh, the situation is that the, um, the order in which I gave you the markets last week is very much correct. You have uh, the NASDAQ as the least risky, 
then you have the S&Ps, followed by the Dow, followed by the Russell, followed by Europe. Until that changes somewhat, until those spread relationships stabilize uh, amongst themselves, you will not see a permanent held rally. It, it's just impossible. You cannot have the uh, you cannot have the financials leading down the Russell, and at the same time not have violent moves down in the S&Ps as people just rotate out of whatever sector is in favor. It's impossible. It's not going to happen. Volatility is going to stay above 50% and so on. So to have sustained rallies, we need those spread relationships. And that is why I show them to you to stabilize and start coming in. When will it be safe to start carrying significant overnight positions uh, again knowing that risk has stabilized well I would argue when we start closing in volatility and this is a weekly chart below 43 um, while we keep on uh, being above 43 in this band between 43 and 80 uh, bad things happen. You can see how far down it comes and then spikes straight back up towards 80. Uh, if you have a look at this period back in 08. Now, could this happen again? Absolutely. I would want to see this kind of behavior below 43, this kind of behavior below 43 before I can call it an all over. And this is why I'm saying to you, do not be fooled by even 10% rallies in the S&Ps because this can happen two days later or one day later. Have a look at this period. Have a look at what happened. Um, it's not safe until you get several days below 43. This kind of behavior, this kind of behavior, that it's really stabilizing and that the ranges in volatility are reducing. Right, on to the biases. Now, I don't want to give you levels because they're meaningless. Keep on looking at the yield curve. I've been saying this for weeks. The twos and tens, 14, 15, they are a huge buy. Whether we see it again, who knows? We might do if we get a real bout of risk off. Um, but if they start instead moving towards the 70s and having smaller ranges, that is a sign that risk is stabilizing. Okay, that is all I'm saying. Uh, I wanted to be long. I was long. It uh, up in the 70s to 75. I'll be a seller, and but I will be buying risk because to me this is the biggest sign that risk is stabilizing. Now, VIX is also a great predictor of risk. And I told you last week, that if we go above 43, we can easily go back up to 80. Well, we got up to 70 something. Now, I'm telling you, don't be, don't be fooled by moves under, uh, you know, uh, under 50% or anything. 43% to me is the magic level. It needs to start closing below 43% with smaller ranges for me to feel comfortable. Now, this thing, these twos, tens and the VIX might happen at the same time. If they do, it's a reinforcement of the view. Now, I've given you, for what it's worth, the levels. 26.25 was my level last week. It still is my level. I think while we keep on closing the week above that, even with those ridiculous squeezes, we are okay -ish. I won't say we are great, we are okay -ish. Um, Those levels are the retracement ABC levels. I like them simply because everybody will be stopped out by 2260. Hell, you know, you've, um, you, you pays your money, you takes your choice. I'll, I'll, I'll go long. Uh, 2864 on the upside is the Rubicon, as it were. I think the market on those ridiculous squeezes in the next month or so could get up there. But if it fails up there, 
then we are in big trouble, and I mean big trouble. We probably will have a, a, a further 20% move from 2800, from 2864. To me, NQ is still the best of a bad bunch. It has fantastic support in, I haven't shown it to you because otherwise this video will be like two hours long, 6,750 to 6,500, there's a band there of support, all kinds of support and all kinds of targets. I love that area for calls, call spreads, whatever. I, I would mark this as my, probably my favorite for the next, uh, for the next couple of weeks. Uh, stocks to me are best avoided unless you want to, you know, wait all the way till 1800 to 2100 band, which probably doesn't happen very quickly. But to me, the stocks can only have very temporary and very quickly sold into bounces. So I'd, I'd keep it away. The dollar, I really don't want to know because that is a factor of people's positioning. I can have no insight in that. I can have no idea when they're going to trigger them, not trigger them, decide, not decide. To me, best to uh, keep away from that kind of uh, senseless volatility. Plenty of other things that work, especially those spreads. Keep on looking at those spreads, okay? Because they will they are showing you stabilization or not. If you get stabilization, you know what you're looking for. You're looking for the 2864 level to be out. Thank you very much indeed and tweet you on Monday.